Well, usually. I forgot your last name. Can I see your back? Galupin. Galupin. Yeah. How do I say the full name? Nunu Galupin. Oh my God. Forget that. Nuno Galupin. Yeah. Nuno Galupin. Yeah. So the Portuguese have these long, long ass names. Bernardo Taveras Moreira. <laughs> Nuno Galupin. <laughs> yeah. His name is Nuno, Nuno Galpin. Yeah. Hello. How you doing? Portuguese commentator, well-known figure, musical expert. They say. <laughs> I mean, let's make sure your face is in focus and not mine. Are we good? You're always in focus. It's always, <laughs> thank Even you so much. Even if you dance. Oh, very kind. Yeah, very I kind. know that. <laughs> now, Salvador is so kind and humble, so I wanted to talk to you because you're, you know, you can big him up. Let's speak the truth. He has a chance at winning. For the first time, I can say that for a Portuguese song. Never in my life I would expect that to happen so fast. Because yeah. we changed the national final this year. Right. And we were expecting it to grow gradually and to be able to produce a song like this within a five-year scope. I would never imagine yeah. it would be like that in the first year. When you heard this song for the first time, did you know it had the potential to win? I first got a demo, just guitar and voice without the string arrangement and without the stage setting, uh, which was humble uh, from the beginning, mm -hmm. but without seeing Salvador. And I said, okay, it's a good song. When I heard the first rehearsal for the first semi-final in Portugal, I was, wow. <laughs> and then I went to Salvador and without even imagining that such a phenomenon will grow from there, I would say, in three weeks, people will be talking about you. We'll win something from this competition because people mm -hmm. will realize there's an artist like you singing in this country. Because his album, was released last year and virtually, um, well, was virtually n forgotten. Uh, it, it got back to the charts after, yeah. after the final. Uh, but suddenly, in the second rehearsal, the cameraman crew were enjoying the song, the lighting crew were enjoying the song, all the musicians uh. were enjoying the song, and I said, wait, there's something going on. And it grew from there. Oh, it's lovely. And now at Eurovision, the hype's only building. Could you give us a sense of what it's like in Portugal? Like it's national selection. It's like a f uh, World Cup. <laughs> it's like that. Uh, social media, television, even the competition from national television that we represent. Everybody is going Salvador, Salvador, Salvador. Wow. Well, it's like the savior for the country. <laughs> is this the first time it's been like this for Eurovision? It's never been like this. Never. Ever. Do you think it's driven by like pride? People want Portugal to do well finally? Definitely in that sense. You know, when we won European Cup last year in, yes. in, in social media, the word was, well, next year Eurovision. Just for fun. So there's something in the background for us. It's, it, there was an opera by Philip Glass in 1988, uh, 1998, where uh, one of the characters would sing a Portugal won Eurovision Song Contest. So this is a dream, a long dream. We started going to the Eurovision in 1964. We had zero, so we did the zeros, the null points, yeah. right from the beginning. <laughs> How Eurovision could that be? Yeah. It was perfect. Uh, but we never won. And we never had a really powerful winning song. We had one in the national finals back in 1981 by Dos. The, w the year before they came with Bim Bom, okay. they did something called Alibaba, which was oh. far better than Sheba's horoscope. <laughs> and on the very same tone. But finally, we have a song that not only is an UFO, it's a great song, it's yeah. a Eurovision song. Why not? Jamala was not a typical Eurovision True. song. Lordy was not a typical Eurovision True. song. So UFOs can work. But also, the main thing about it is this is a song that reflects the music we listen to every day in Lisbon, ah. in Portugal, in the whole country. Because for the last almost 20 years, the songs that would compete in Eurovision for Portugal were definitely out of focus with mm. Portuguese mainstream mm -hmm. and or Portuguese alternative culture. Yep. And finally, by having a national final that brings in the composers that do the songs we listen to in the radio, that we go to on a regular gig, so that gives already a sense of respect, not that I don't respect the others that represented us for the, all these years. They mm -hmm. worked a lot when nobody else wanted to compete. Yes. Uh, musicians uh, slagged off uh, the national final for many years. And I hope this year, not only for the final, but now for all this Salvador Fanonro, will help to raise the awareness that this competition is very important, important for Portuguese music in the beginning and can mm. bring us something to deliver yes. in the Eurovision Song Contest. Was there a low in Portuguese Eurovision history? Was there a, a rock bottom? Uh, for many years. <laughs> yeah. Can you name the time period? Homens uh, de Luta, for instance, and I'm friends oh. of Nuno Gel. La Luta e Algria. I quite like that. <laughs> uh, I don't. And I'm, I'm friends of the, the main singer and, well, 
for a long time I haven't been enjoying our songs. Okay. Uh, so it's good that finally we have something that uh, makes us feel proud and that reflects the trends of music in Portugal. We have a good jazz scene, a really mm. good jazz scene. We have a great singer-songwriter scene. So those two are melded in one song. And everyone's talking about Italy winning. Do you see a scenario where Portugal wins? I see a scenario where Portugal wins if Italy doesn't. <laughs> It's maths. Yeah. Uh, Italy has been, well, it's the obvious uh, favorite, True. of course. And ever since it won uh, San Remo, it's been in our years. Yeah. I don't know how people will react, if people are tired of the song or not. It's a great song. True. It's one of my favorites. Definitely is one of my favorites. It's a great Eurovision song. So let's see how it works. Yeah. First there's a final, a yeah. semi-final, and then there's a final. But I'm hopeful. I'm really hopeful. And can you give us some insight into Salvador? He seems so calm about all of he's, this. He's like that. He's like that. He's a cool guy. Uh, he's not into competition. He's into music and mm. singing. That's why when everybody asks him, oh, are you prepared to yeah. sing? He said, okay, I know the song. I'm prepared. That's how cool it is. And he's really like that. And finally, how are you holding your nerve? Because I get the sense that you're very excited and you want Portugal to do it. I was screaming in the cabin. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord, it, it's, it's soundproof. Otherwise, we would invade our neighbors. Yes, we were screaming in the cabin when, he, uh, uh, when the, the song ended. It's an amazing song. I was really emotional. Yeah, it, it seems like it. Well, no, 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 I wish you all the best and ah, Salvador all the best. I wish Salvador all the best. Yeah. yeah. Good luck to you. Do you have a final message for all your fans? Because you're a known figure in Portugal. Well, keep on reading them because they're and looking at them because they're the best international Eurovision blog. You're very kind. Thank you so much. I'm not kind. I'm truthful. Uh, obrigado. You're welcome. And a hug. <laughs>